<laughs> Welcome to the Respect a Man podcast. And today we have a special guest, Keith Yaki. After having sex with 200, yes, I said 200 women, he could not get the one woman he really wanted to stay. And the one woman he wanted to have sex with for the rest of his life, that was his wife. He couldn't get her to stay. Keith had to learn how to stay married and get his wife to want to have sex with him again. So Keith is here today to share his secrets so men like him can get their wives to, yes, you know it, have sex with them and stay happily married. Welcome to the show, Keith. Hey, what's up, Teresa? I am stoked <laughs> to be here. I love it. We are stoked to have you. Oh my goodness. The listeners today, they are going to love what you have to share. They're dying to know your secrets. Yes. Well, I was dying <laughs> to know them too when my wife left. So this has been a long, hard road, but uh, I think the practical advice we can talk about today, uh, I think men will resonate. And usually the women are like, yeah, he's right. Keep preaching, Keith. Yeah, I heard a little bit about your story and you and I chatted previously before we started this podcast and I just know the women are going to love what you have to say too. Um, before we get started, I love to start with a quote and I'm going to go ahead and read this okay. and I want to see how it resonates with you. So the quote for today is couples who have an erotic sex life understand that foreplay begins at the end of the previous orgasm. Mm, that is really true. That is really true. <laughs> what are my thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on that? A, it's so true. B, um, what I've experienced, either A, in sleeping with a couple hundred women, or B, more importantly, getting my wife to absolutely like want me and crave me and carnally lust after me, is that it's not the sexual things that guys do to get the woman turned on, it's a lot of the non-sexual things that guys do that get the women turned on sexually. So, uh, and it and it happens like after sex, it happens in the kitchen, it happens in normal <laughs> everyday life by showing up. And I'm not just talking kinky, you know, kitchen table sex or all that. I'm just saying like, like my wife, when I invest in her and I show her honor and I treat her that she's like, she's not just a walking vagina, but she's a real human being from head to toe, inside and out. That's what makes her look at me and go, this guy's sexy. So I agree with it and I love it. You said sex and you said the word kitchen, which is amazing because so many women do have like a little bit of a chore list that they like to present to men in order to get them to have sex. And really what they're saying is it's not about doing chores for us. It's more about connecting with us outside of the bedroom. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And in a relationship, I feel like, you know, probably as you've experienced, um, that connection outside of the bedroom is what, you know, women so deeply desire so that we can be intimate with you and have that erotic sex life inside of the bedroom. Is that kind of what you found as well? Uh, like, absolutely. Do you mind if I like piggyback on that for a half a second? No, go ahead. <laughs> because here's what guys typically do. They will do the transactional stuff outside of the bedroom as if, and I say transaction because that's the attitude that they approach you with. They're like, okay, I did the dishes. I was a good dad. Um, I didn't, you know, I actually hit the hamper with my laundry this week. Can I have sex? And it's as if they're looking for like a, a cookie, the nookie or a gold star, as opposed to saying, hey, I'm a really attractive dude. I know how to put my laundry away. I'm a good dad because I'm a great fucking dad. And oh, by the way, uh, the reason I did my chores and I did my dishes because I'm a good human being. I'm not doing it to get sex. I'm doing it because I'm a partner in this team. Exactly. You enjoy helping out your wife. I enjoy being a great <laughs> partner. <laughs> okay. But I want to circle back around to, you know, kind of your story of how you initially came to this conclusion is that you, your wife, your very own wife, wasn't wanting to have sex with you. Yeah. What was it like the moment you realized that you were starting to maybe think about how you could get sex with your wife, or maybe your thoughts were straying outside of the home. But what was that like for you? What was your fear in that situation? And how did you overcome that right in that moment? Okay, well, my story is very extreme compared to most, but in the extremities, we see a pattern that happens in every relationship. So the bottom line is, 
when a wife is no longer initiating, uh, being super into it, uh, unleashing her, we might say her uh, inner slut. Maybe I could say that her her mm-hmm. inner um, what do you? There's a different word for slut because slut has a negative thing, even though I don't think it's negative. Uh, what's the negative? You know what I'm talking about? Like her erotic ne- feminine energy. Yes. Yes. Okay. Inner <laughs> nympho, inner erotic energy, right? Yes. Yes. And so that shuts down when she loses attraction. So mm-hmm. the base of all of this is the lady is no longer attracted. So in my situation, my wife had lost so much attraction. It wasn't just, I don't want to have sex with you. It's I'm packing up a U-Haul of all my shit and I am leaving. Goodbye. I'm going to a different state. I'm going to live in a different city and I want to go date other guys or a particular guy. So that's, that's when the light bulb went on to me. It's like, I've become so unattractive to this beautiful lady. That's not that she doesn't want to have sex with me. It, the reason why I say it's extreme is because it was so extreme. She just said, I'm out of here. Enough of this. So that's when I realized, oh, I'm at fault here. I'm the one to blame. I'm the one who needs to work on me and figure out how to change me. Now I say I'm about 95% at fault because that gives a little room for her to take some of the blame. Mm-hmm. But what I've experienced in working with guys and even in my own life is it's about, it's usually 95% the guy's fault and guys don't like to hear that. But when I show them that if they take the ownership of it being their fault, then they can also take the ownership of fixing it. And then that gives them a lot of hope. Yeah. I feel like so many women want to be sexy and have that sexual exotic energy as well, but into a, in a relationship, so many men, it's kind of contradictory, but so many men desire that, but yet they don't want their wives to exude it outside of the bedroom. So what is kind of contradictory and very funny and ironic, and I've heard this in a lot of conversations in the hair salon as a stylist, is that our men don't want us to act like a porn star, but yet in the bedroom, they want a porn star, but yet they'll look at porn. So we tend to get into relationships and shut down our sexual energy, thinking it's going to keep our husbands from becoming you know jealous or insecure. But that's what they want in the bedroom. Yeah. And so I think there has to be a balance too, with that type of energy that goes on within a relationship. Um, you know, what turns us on isn't acceptable during the day. Yeah. So we kind of have to have that balance too, because that keeps that mystery and that connection going, you know, that the sexual energy going in a relationship. It's a big mistake. It's, it's a massive mistake. And You know, if you think about what's unattractive of a man, usually like when people say, like guys will come up like, my wife just quit having sex with me or it's not, there might be some quantity, but the quality is not there. The answer usually is your wife just followed your lead and saw that you quit on yourself. So she eventually quit on you. And that's usually what happens is when guys stop being attractive, it's they quit on themselves. And sometimes that they're so unattractive and they know it that they start to develop this this whole jealousy thing. And, and if they're white, like my wife, like is just super gorgeous. Like you just look at her and you're just like, damn, like every guy wants to spend some alone time with her. Like, and I get that, (laughs) but I'm also there cheering her on not to go be with other guys, but to be like, bravo girl, you are hot AF (laughs) and work. Like I want her to feel that. And so when guys do hit on her or come up to her, like when she's out alone, I'm like, of course they will. Why wouldn't they? You're like, yeah, she goes home with me. Exactly. <laughs> Go ahead, talk to her. She goes exactly. home with me. <laughs> yeah. And then she feels good because guy, she's getting attention. We all love to feel wanted. We all love to feel desired. We all love to 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 be flirted with. And so the usually the reason why guys have a problem with that is because they're not showing up as their most attractive self. So the woman is like, well, I'm not really attracted to you anymore. So if they, he does see that she's getting attention. They usually run to be like, oh, that's mine, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, yeah, but you're not being very attractive, dude. And that's, I think that's the bottom line. The, the root cause of it all is a guy stops being attractive. 